Some of the best minds in the world bringing you some of the best knowledge on TRS clips. You've trained Hrithik Roshan, you've trained John Abraham. I'm sure you've trained many more Bollywood stars. Yeah. Um, let's specifically talk about these two. When you're helping someone put on muscle, um, is there a mathematical formula you follow? Like, do you go for X grams of protein per kilogram of body weight? Is it nuanced based on, you know, the, the particular person? Where do carbs come in? What's your take on fat? You can go as scientific as you want to go. Uh, the audience kind of knows the basics, but at the same time, we'll, we'll cover everything. We'll cover the basics, we'll cover the advanced stuff as well. Yeah, it's, it's not really that uh, advanced, to be honest. It's very, it's very simple. I try not to overcomplicate things. I think when you've got more variables that can go wrong, then you know, you're know you looking for trouble. Mm. So I try to keep it very, very simple. So as an example, we'll talk about Riddick now because I'm, I'm working with him right now and I can remember everything I can recall is that I recently had him on like 4,800 calories. What? Uh, yeah, 4,800 calories because when I first saw him now, I was like, okay, you need to get in shape, but you have no muscle on your frame. He hasn't been training. Uh, so I really need, even though I wanted to diet him down immediately because he's holding so much body fat, we had no choice but to uh, you know, go into a mass building phase. So he was eating a lot of clean calories. The only fats that he was having was several egg yolks. He'd have uh, two tablespoons of olive oil and he would have uh, naturally occurring fats. I'd have him to supplement with a tablespoon of uh, EPA and DHEAs as well. But everything was just, everything else was coming in the form of protein and carbohydrates. You know, your typical chicken, uh, you know, poultry, your meat, your fish, your protein powder, that's his protein sources. And then the carbohydrates coming from rice, there was some roti in there. There was uh, a lot of, a lot of potato, oats. Mm. Uh, and that was it, you know, it split into six meals and a shake every single day. Now his carbohydrates were higher on his training days than his non-training days and then even higher on chest day. because so I'm really trying to bring up that uh, weakness at the moment isn't allowed to eat for a good 90 minutes before bed, but his goal is to eat immediately upon wakening. Gotcha. So uh, that's the goal because obviously he's fasted for a duration. I need to take him out of catabolism and put him into anabolism by having food as soon as possible. And then drinking about a gallon of water a day. A lot of people don't perform, not because of nutrition, it's because of hydration. And unfortunately, a lot of people wait until they're thirsty, which is probably a signal for dehydration until they drink. And, you know, if your body's made up of about 7% fluid and you're dehydrated by, say, 3%, you could be down in productivity by about 20%. Mm. So it's very important to stay hydrated as well. So, you know, that's a perspective. And, you know, we'll take digestive enzymes, maybe some apple cider vinegar, uh, some pineapple as well with those meals to help with the breakdown and the insulin response to them maybe a little bit of activity after certain meals whenever he can get the activity in because he's, he's a busy guy. Uh, but that's kind of what it looks like. By activity, you mean like a walk or a jog? Yeah, or it could be like 10 minute walk. It could be, you know, a lot of the time I'll say, look, hey, wherever you are, if you're in your trailer, I want you to stand up and sit down 50 times. <laughs> you know, if you're on if you're on a plane, you go to the toilet and you go and stand up and sit down, do some toilet squats, you know. Got it. Just to get the body activated. Get the body moving and help with the blood sugar response after having a meal of that bit size because he's eating big meals. But now we've gone into the fat burning phase. So uh, those has come down to about 2,800 calories now. And it'll come. It'll continue to come down now. Dependent on how much weight, you know, he's, he's still losing weight on that. So I'm not going to change it. I only make changes when we plateau. Gotcha. Um, is there like an X number of grams of protein that uh, you stick to in your bulk and your cut? Yeah, yeah. It could be as high as like 1.5 grams of protein. Per, per uh, kilogram? Uh, per pound of body weight. Per pound. Okay. Yeah, per pound of body weight. Gotcha. I can't remember the kilos now. It's been a long time. <laughs> and uh, then I'll probably come down to about one gram of protein per pound of body weight as we're getting into the shredding phase more. Mm. Be okay. Just to retain. Okay, I think the assumption earlier used to be that when you're shredding, you have like higher levels of protein to prevent muscle loss. Has that changed lately? Yeah, I always go come lower, you know. Okay. Uh, carbohydrates are protein sparing, that's true. But, you know, I, if you're taking in too much protein, that can still lead to fat. You, mm. know? you know, a lot of people think it's just protein and carbs. But when we get into, you know, single digit body fat levels, you have to cut everything. Mm. You know, H How do you know if it's too much protein? 
um, you know, I'll, I'll just know that their body's plateauing. They're just not able to utilize, uh, you know, lose the body fat. Like that's but, visual for you. Yeah, it's, everything's visual for me. I take pictures every week, gotcha. uh, but I look at him every day just to make sure I can see everything's going in the right direction. The weaknesses are continuing to strengths. Uh, but I've got a, quite a good eye. You know, I used to be a judge at bodybuilding shows as well. And I was always very, very critical of myself. You know, people always look at themselves in their favorite lighting in the best mirror, look at the best body part. I always like to look at the worst body part in the worst lighting. And when that is impressive, then you know you've got something, gotcha. you know? It's like, you know, when I used to compete in shows, my goal was not to impress the people, you know, the judges at the front. The person that was just coming in through mm. the back of the auditorium, I wanted to impress that person, you know. Mm. Uh, in terms of like the worst food that you can possibly put in your body in a phase like this, would you say it's like processed food and sugar? For sure. Sugar, yeah, it's terrible for longevity anyway. It's in, in, inflammatory. And uh, anything that is deep fried, because a lot of the fruit is fried in you know, refined seed oils, canola oil, things like that, soybean oil. So that's very pro-inflammatory. We try to stay away from a lot of the omega-6s mm -hmm. and go for more of the anti-inflammatory omega-3 foods. Uh, you know, so if it's grilled, if it's like just pan fried with some olive oil, that's absolutely fine. But when you're going for the deep fried, yeah, you need to stay away from that. And a lot of the creamy foods that you get here in India, I know the foods taste absolutely awesome, uh -huh. but I'm testing a lot of these foods now as well in my blood glucose monitor, seeing the response. A lot of it is carb laden. You, you, know, you mean no like protein. gravies? Pardon? Yeah, like yeah, creamy gravies. Mm. You know, if it's a lighter sauce and it's not as much calories, then great. You know, like Riddick Chef has learned to do some phenomenal sauces just with spinach and put some kimchi in there, a little mm. bit of avocado, whatever. Thank you for watching this clip. If you want to learn more about this topic, we've curated a playlist just for you. And here's a link to the whole episode.